Hello and welcome back. For this video we're going to be looking at my computer screen instead of my face and my recording studio. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to DAWs or Digital Audio Workstations. Some people call them DAWs for short. There are quite a few different varieties to choose from from various software manufacturers. The one that I'm using here is called Cubase. It's from Steinberg Technologies over in Germany. They have been making music software since the mid 80s. They are a leader in the industry. They've been around for a long time. And a lot of their technologies are used by other software manufacturers in their own DAWs. It also happens to be the same program that we use in the digital music studios here at the college, so by watching this video, you're getting an introduction to the tools that you would be using if you were to continue on in this program. Now, if you've got any kind of a fairly recent computer, Windows or Apple, laptop, desktop, even some tablets, you can pretty much perform all of the functions that would have required a complete studio full of equipment only 10 or 15 years ago. It was a major investment. Back then we used to have tape recorders, we had sequencers, maybe a basic computer for controlling MIDI, hardware synthesizers, tone modules, racks of effects processors and signal processing equipment, of course microphones and preamps, thousands and thousands of dollars invested into mixers, speakers, all of this equipment. Well, most of this is now rolled into one package that you can get, and it's a fraction of the cost of what you used to have to pay. I'm sitting here at my dining room table doing this demonstration using the software, a basic MIDI interface and audio interface, and a microphone. Small investment, and I can do all of this stuff. So what all does a digital audio workstation do? Well, first of all, it can record and edit audio. We can take a microphone or a guitar and record the input from that instrument onto an audio track. We can also import sample data or loops from the content that came with the program or maybe something we've purchased. We can apply effects to those audio tracks. We can do all kinds of signal processing. And we can also control MIDI from a digital audio workstation. MIDI is performance information that we can use to control external hardware synthesizers or something called a virtual instrument. Virtual instruments are instruments that live right in your software. And this could be something like a representation of a classic vintage synthesizer or maybe a sample-based virtual instrument that specializes in string sounds or bass sounds, or maybe general purpose. We also can mix all of our tracks together, and we can master. So we can take a song all the way from concept, through the recording, the mixing, and the mastering stage, start to finish, in one application. Now that's pretty fantastic. Now different DAWs as I said, have different pros and cons. Some are stronger in some features and weaker in others. Some are specialized. Cubase started off as a MIDI program, and so they do that very well. They also have an excellent sounding audio engine. Other programs, such as Ableton Live, is very good at a live performance situation where you may want to call MIDI loops and audio loops and samples and trigger them on the fly during a live performance, you may want to consider Ableton Live. Now, even though they have different specializations and different strengths and weaknesses, they all carry a certain amount of similarities. They're sort of like cars. Once you've learned how to drive a car, you can pretty much go to just about any other car and with a little bit of poking around, figure out how to work it. DAWs are the same way. Cars have they all have a steering wheel, they've all got windshield wipers, they've all got a brake pedal, they've all got a starter. Maybe a little bit different from one car to the other. One car might use a key to start it and the other one might use a push button. 
but they still have starters. DAWs are the same way. They're going to have similar features. They just might be implemented a little bit differently. So once you learn one DAW, it's not that hard to transfer over to another one. Now in any DAW, there are going to be two windows that you do most of your work in. 85 to 90% of your work are going to be done in one of these two windows. And the first of these windows is called the project or the arrange window. And that's what you're looking at right here. Now it's going to give us an open workspace where we can start creating different kinds of tracks and putting data in those tracks by recording or entering MIDI data. Maybe we're adding markers so we know where we are in the song. All kinds of different tracks we can edit. And they all show up in the project window. And we can do basic editing in here by cutting and pasting and moving things around in this edit and arrange window. So the other second window that is one of the two main ones is called the mixer. And the mix window, I can open it by clicking on that button. And right now it's only got a couple of faders on it. One of them shows me my hardware input and metering is one of the things you get in the mixer window. So you can see your input levels. If I were playing something back, I'd see something here in the output window. And as I add more tracks, the mixing board will start to get populated with faders and I can mute and solo, change the panning, add effect sends, put in inserts, do equalization, all kinds of stuff in the mix window. So that's my second main window. So we got the mix window, which I will close using a key command, and my project slash arrange window. Learn those key commands when you start going through your DAW. It'll make it a lot faster to move around and it will greatly enhance your workflow. Flow. Now there are other specialized windows that'll pop up for special functions. Maybe a sample editor for an audio track or a piano roll or an event list for a MIDI track. Perhaps the audio, the interface for editing your virtual instrument or your effect processor. These are specialized pop-up windows that'll occur uh, for editing that specific type of thing. But once again, your main two windows are your project and arrange window and your mix window. Now the project window is going to have a timeline in it that's going to move from left to right as we go through our song. So let's see how that works. We're going to do a couple things. Let's, let's make a couple of tracks, the most basic kinds of tracks that you're going to find. And uh, the first one is an audio track. So when we set up an audio track, we have to tell it a few things. So do we want it to be mono, stereo, surround? Maybe we want, we want to name the track. I strongly recommend that you get into the habit of naming your tracks. It's good housekeeping. Uh, name it before you record anything into it. So I've just created an audio track here. And I'm going to put it into record by pushing that button. And then you can see the meters saying that there's something there to record. And then down here I have a transport control. This has uh, got buttons on it similar to a tape recorder. Stop, play, record, rewind, fast forward. Shows me where I am in the song, some locates and some other metering. So let's rewind back to the top. And I've got a little baby version of my transport up here. So I'm just going to click on record. And as I speak, you will see the waveform of my voice appearing right before your very eyes. Now let's record some numbers. Three, two, one, five, four. Okay. I have recorded an audio track and I am going to play it back for you. And as I speak, you will see the waveform of my voice appearing right before your very eyes. Now let's record some numbers. Three, two, okay, you get the idea. Now the big difference between recording audio in a digital audio workstation as compared to a tape recorder is that the audio is recorded as a file that sits on your hard drive somewhere. And when we play that file back, the software is just saying, okay, point to that file and play it from here to here. So we can edit, we can chop this thing up. Let's go in here and cut this little section out and delete that. So all we have is this right here. Now let's record some numbers. Three, two, one. 
And we're free to move and rearrange this stuff all around in the arrangement window however we want. So we're going to take our numbers and chop them up. And now I say I think I said three, two, one, five, four. So let's take these and move them around. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Let's play that back. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm free to grab, cut, movie, move, paste, mangle this audio around any way that I want to. This is called nonlinear, non-destructive editing. I haven't changed that original file that's sitting on my hard drive one bit. All I've done is told the software to take that piece of audio, chop it up into pieces, and play it back in a different order. I can pull this thing back out, cut that little bit off there, drag this thing out, and there's my file the way it now was record originally recorded. Three, two... Now we could kind of do this with tape, but it was destructive. We would actually have to take the tape, put it on a cutting block, grab a razor blade, slice that tape into pieces, and stick it back together with tape in order to do the same thing that I'm doing right here in my digital audio workstation. The big difference being that on tape, it was linear. In other words, it starts at the beginning and plays through till the end. And it's also destructive. If I grab that tape and chop it up, it's chopped up. I don't have the original anymore unless I made a copy of it. With digital audio workstations, there's always the undo. That famous command that has saved so many engineers' butts. <laughs> All right. So that's an audio file that was recorded onto a track. How about adding a loop? that kind of an audio file. Well, Cubase gives me this thing called Media Bay, and Media Bay gives me access to all of the content that's provided in Cubase. And this includes drum loops, synthesizer sounds, samples, track presets, anything that you can think of that lives in Cubase, you can find in Media Bay. And I can find it by sorting for certain things. So I know that I wanna go in and find some drums and percussion. I don't want a drum sample, I want a beat. So I'm gonna select that. And then I've got a bunch of different musical styles over here I can choose from. I got world and ethnic, urban, rock, metal, pop, jazz. Let's go to electronica since we're studying that. And then here's a bunch of the substyles or the different genres of electronica and dance music that we've talked about. So let's look for something in techno. And I've got audio tracks, and I've got MIDI tracks. Since we're t talking about audio tracks, ooh, that's loud. Let's listen to that. So I can audition them. And I've set it up so these tracks will automatically play back at the tempo of my project. So even though it was originally recorded at 144 beats per minute, I want to hear it at my project tempo of 108 beats per minute. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna use that. So all I have to do is double click on it and then I can close my media bay. And there's my drum track. It's four bars long. Change the color if I want. There, December's right around the corner. Okay, and now just like I can with an audio track, I can chop this thing up, I can copy it, I can move it. It's only referencing the loop that's sitting on the hard drive. So it doesn't matter how many copies of, I make, of this that I make, it's still only four bars long. And that's the original length as it's set on the hard drive. We're gonna mute my voice. And now I can play this track back. And let's say I wanna take this little piece right here and uh, let's reverse it. So I'm gonna cut it right there on the beat and we're gonna make a separate little piece of audio out of this because if I do what a destructive type of edit, which would be reversing, uh, I don't want it to affect my other parts that use that same sample. And so we can flip it. Uh, 
that's kind of cool. All right, so those are the two different kinds of audio tracks that we're dealing with. Now, how about MIDI? MIDI is different than an audio track. An audio track has sound in it. MIDI tracks have performance information in it. In other words, they don't make any sound on their own. You've got to play an instrument, either an attached hardware synthesizer or a virtual instrument in order to get something out of a MIDI track. So I'm going to create a virtual instrument track, which is going to have a MIDI track automatically associated with it. So we'll go up here and we'll say, add an instrument track. And Steinberg provides me with a bunch of cool synthesizers and a couple of drum modules that I can use. Uh, I like this one here called Retrolog, so I'm going to add a track of that. And Retrolog is an analog subtractive synthesizer, just like what you've been studying. So we've got oscillators and filters, envelope generators, amplifiers, LFOs, modulation matrix. And I can play it right here from the keyboard. I can go down to my control panel, my transport, and turn on a virtual keyboard so I can play it from my computer keyboard if I want to do that too. Let's turn that off. And we've also got a lot of presets. So let's say I want to come up with a baseline to go with this. Now, just like my media browser, my presets can be searched for by categories. I'm going to look for some synth bass sounds, and maybe I'm looking for something uh, dry. So let's audition a few of these. Let's go with that, just because it, it's easy. It's right there. So a MIDI track, you can enter the information in a number of different ways. I could play it on my virtual keyboard. I could use an attached MIDI keyboard or controller, or I could just draw the information in if I wanted to. I could also use a sequencer to create the information in a step-like pattern. But I'm just going to go, go in and draw in a two-bar MIDI pattern, and we're going to open it up. I can play it right here on the on the screen, we'll zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to add, just draw in some notes. So we'll grab my pencil tool and go in here. Oops, that's glue. There's draw. All right, let's rewind that and see what it sounds like. Great, I love it. I don't think I'm gonna win a Grammy, but it's a start. Let's manipulate that just the way, the same way we can audio. I'm going to make some copies of it. Wunderbar. And we'll play that back. There's my repeat, or my reverse. Let's do my little thing with my numbers again. So I'm going to take my numbers, chop them up, get rid of this, and let's just kind of scatter these around. Non-linear, non-destructive editing, right on. And let's turn them up a little bit. And we'll take that track out of mute, and let's see what we got. Two. And I think we need to open up our mixer. Oh, look, I've got some more faders now. Five. So we're going to tune our, turn up our drum loop a little bit. Two. Working for me. One. Maybe a little bit more of the three, voice. Five. Four. 
Okay, so we've obviously seen our note data. There's other kinds of uh, things that we can do with MIDI tracks. We can change velocities of notes just by drawing them in like that. That's how hard the note was played. So that'll uh, make a difference right there. If we rewind that back and play it again. Two. One. I could also add control information. Maybe I want to put in some modulation or change the volume on the track. Let's, uh, let's make it turn down and then turn up and then turn down and turn back up again. Two, one. All right, so that's uh, some of the other kinds of MIDI data that we can put onto a MIDI track. Now, how does all of this magic stuff work? Well, back in 1996, Steinberg developed a technology called VST, Virtual Studio Technology. And the first thing that they did with VST was to create effects to put onto tracks. Uh, these are things like reverbs and delays. The next version of VST, VST 2.0, when that came out, they added the ability to route MIDI data into a VST module or plugin. And that will open the door for the creation of virtual instruments. VST has continually evolved. It's at version 3.5 now. We can do very sophisticated things with MIDI in VST 3.5. And Steinberg has always made uh, VST open source. It uses C++. Any manufacturer can download the API from Steinberg's website and create VST plugins to their heart's content. Lots of other DAW platforms use VST technology. Not all of them. Some of them like to have their own little thing, audio units, RTAs. Uh, these things used to be called TDM plugins. Uh, but VST is kind of the, the leader of the pack, and because it's open source, a lot of different manufacturers use it. Now, these controller information tracks that I added in my MIDI stuff, this is really important in EDM because it's through these controllers that we make our tracks interesting and dynamic. We can use control changes to do things like filter sweeps, change our resonance on the filter, change the speed of an LFO. We can do all of those kinds of things that create textural ambient changes that make the music sound interesting and come alive. So it's very important that we use controller information to make our tracks interesting. What are some of the other kinds of tracks that we can add to our digital audio workstation? Well, we can add, let's just go over them briefly here. We talked about audio tracks, instrument tracks, MIDI tracks. We've also got arranger tracks, so I can take chunks of my songs and assign them to letters and trigger them with keys on my keyboard. I could create an effects channel for doing delays and reverbs. Group channels allow me to route uh, multiple audio channels into one group for easy control and automation. So I could route all my drums or my strings or background vocals into one group channel and, and automate those or put one effect that would affect all of them. Markers, as I mentioned, good for keeping track of verses, choruses, intros, bridges, time signature tracks, tempo tracks, Video tracks, I could even import a movie into Cubase and score it while watching the movie right here in the application. That's something I do a lot of at my studio, mostly post-production, where I'm cleaning things up and making the audio sound good. So what about these other kinds of plugins? You've heard me use that word a couple times now. Now, a plugin is a specialized application that is designed to run inside another application and enhance or support or add new features to it. So plugins that did effects were one of the first types of VSTs that were generated. I'm going to open up a reverb. Let's open up uh, RevX Hall, and I'm putting that on my drum track, which I'm going to solo. So if I play that now, we're going to hear that drum track played back with this great big reverb on it to oh, solo it. There we go. Okay, right now all we're hearing is this big hall reverb. 
let's dial that back a little bit. And I'm also going to tell this track to loop for me. So it will play continuously. Okay, so this controls my dry wet mix. So you can hear that reverb coming in. And I could even automate that if I wanted to. Check this out. If I tell this thing to write automation while it's playing and I do this, All right, let's roll that back. Now the little R, that means it's going to read what I just did. And there it goes. I can even look at that automation data if I want to. There it is. That's what I did with that knob. And I could go in and change that or add more points to it. Total flexibility and control. So that's just a sample of some of the cool things that you can do in a digital audio workstation. I hope you like this demo, and we'll see you for the next video. Bye-bye.